there we go. Yay! So quick catch up. Um, we're all here. Ooh, first time for everything. <laughs> So, yeah, oh, so look, Severian and Sassati are still in the party sheet. Oh, I didn't use the party sheet. Uh, let me clean that up for you. <laughs> oh, and Dimitri as well. <laughs> uh, Done, but not forgotten. R.I.P. Dimitri. He's not dead, he's just an asshole. I, I mean, he's just left the group for a little bit. <laughs> for a little uh, bit? He's... I think. I think he's... You could probably call, especially after that letter. Yeah. It was very polite. It was a well, well worded reprobate, reprimand, I guess. <laughs> a reprobate. Yeah, it's not what I meant to say. <laughs> I mean, he did get to avoid, you know, by throwing his toys out of the cot. He did get to miss out on meeting his like lifetime eye. Also, we did fuck him over like a ton. No. Yeah, apes like fucking use his name to get into the fucking was it the museum, right? Like you put that all into his name. Yeah, well, no, it was, it was to get a, uh, it was get rock. What is it, Randy Rockus or whatever, or Rock Rock? Oh, Rock. Just... Yeah, from the prison. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And everyone was like, oh, oh, Dimitri's a straight up guy. He would never do anything shady. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna just gonna sort of zoom ahead. We're not gonna focus on this bit too much. Um, but basically, Lord Cop invites you uh, to his private chambers beneath the arena. You you get there without any issue, um, and as you arrive, and the guards let you into the room, uh, your your expectations are not met as he throws open his arms and thanks you and slaps you all on the back. Well done, well done. You've done an absolutely fantastic show. Not only oh, made more money than I could ever imagine, by golly, the bets were going wild the whole time you were out there. Not only that, but you've also gotten rid of a blight. There I said it, a blight, a bloody blight. That steered the city the wrong direction for, well, close on a decade now. Who did we get rid of? Uh, these three, or two of the three, um, us holy wanks to make Dougalberries that Eleanor Yannette was trying to sell um, the slave girl to. Yeah, so, we killed the other one got away, right? Yeah, one, one of them got out. away, which was the guy that actually won the, the auction from uh, or of Isabel, I should say. Isabel is the, the person that was being auctioned. Uh, Eleanor um, was trying to sell to him. Eleanor also escaped, I believe. I don't think you got Eleanor, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure you didn't get it. She, she got it. So yeah, he, he thanks you greatly. Uh, you've, you've done a great, great service. Um, is anyone here, uh, out of character, is anyone here of a Kishi mystic? Don't believe so. No, we've got a year so we didn't get some spell. Uh, wasn't, I thought somebody was, oh no, uh, Orzom. Is that different to the Sky Seer that, uh, is it, it is different, Orzom yeah. Or... Yeah, it is. So for Kishi mystics are sort of, uh, like I guess a parallel to, to gypsies I guess and or like something like that I think actually no stand corrected it's a like a high society like the Illuminati Freemasons that sort of group right yeah um uh, yes, what JD is is basically rebels rebels without a cause so apparently Rylar only knows Elvin, so I, I don't actually understand anything you guys have said for probably the entire... <laughs> uh, everyone understands common, but um, yeah. the fact that you understand Elvish is, is useful because uh, and amongst his, his thanks and praise that is heaped upon you all, um, you also hear him mutter out a, a, a small phrase, almost to himself, uh, that an Elvish translates to uh, read the fucking chat. <laughs> okay. Ready. Hmm. Okay. As he says it, he sort of looks around the room to see if anyone notice or reacts to it. Uh, it strikes me as I... odd. Um, his like 
not the phrase itself, but the manner in which he sort of says it, almost like a test. Almost like what? Almost like a test, sorry. Uh, just the sort of who will save the widow's son sort of thing. I'll give him... I'll I don't know what make that is, like but yes. A subtle, like, tilt of the head when he says it. See what he does. All right. Uh, he he returns the nod, but but says nothing more directly to you, and, and instead addresses the the rest of the group. Um, he says, uh, "Thankfully, my guards apprehended. Uh, well, not apprehended. That's the wrong word. Rescued Isabel, the lady that was being. I can only imagine what sold to those those men you fought on the stairs." She has been recovered. She is safe. The man who is with you, fighting in the pit, he said his name was Andre von Recklinghausen. He is in custody. I see you helped him. I assume you know the man. It's Mr. Mabel, though. He's Ryla's boyfriend. Ah, uh, we know him. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just assumed, because he fought for that lady, I... Uh, my mistake. I mean, I don't know him in the biblical sense, but we know him. Pretty oh. sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> you did go and have a bath with him. Listen, there is nothing having wrong with... Having with couple... other people is wrong. Don't want to be <laughs> Listen, you've never been to, like, an open-air bath before, all right? There's, there's, you know... It was a lot in of an enclosed bath. train carriage, just the two of you! Uh, I don't see how that's any different from taking a bath with a whole bunch of people. All right. It's all right, boy. Nobody's judging here. I am, um, little... says Lord Kelp. <laughs> anyway, we're getting off topic here. <laughs> Excuse me. So... What what about yes we know him is he <laughs> well did you want him released he's well, he's below the arena currently seems like a good strong fighting lad or he'd be a valuable addition besides we can't have like, him moping about the, the train. <laughs> uh, what what he's saying is he'd be a valuable addition to our team of pit fighters. What fighters? Pit fighters? I thought we were hunting. We were fighting, fighting in the pit. Then we're, we're fighting in the pit. <laughs> uh, but I, weren't we after the what's it? Obscurities. We Fighting in the pit. I'm confused. Are the Obscuratis in the pit? Uh, as you mentioned, Obscurati, Lord Kelp sort of snaps to attention. Uh, excuse me, what What did you just say? Yes, uh, yes. apparently we're supposed to be uh, on a secret mission of some kind to, uh, to it's eliminate not a secret the... secret if you tell everyone! No, no, do do go ahead. I, I, of course, I wouldn't wouldn't say a word. He says, pulling out a small scribe pad. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's, it's uh, no, no. What, what, what yeah, was it the Dorans? No, oh, yes, definitely the Obscurati. Yes, apparently they've been causing quite a quite a bit of trouble. I hear. Oh, that sounds, that sounds terrible. And you think? What, do you think they're involved in this kerfuffle in the arena? Uh, I, I would assume so. Uh, that, that's who why, that's who you, these fine young men have been tracking them for quite some time, haven't you? I'm uh, been rather recently put on the case, but I've utmost faith in their abilities. Uh, I'll kind of whisper that as he's saying that. Yeah, so as, as you're speaking, uh, Dave, Ryla just sort of whispers in um, 
Lord Kelp's ears, and his his expression goes from one of concern to sort of a ah uh, right, and then uh, gives you like a knowing yes, yes, I'm. Yeah, I'm yes, sure he's that's a the completely. Case. He's oh, do tell me more about insane, the... Yeah, yeah exactly. Just starts humouring you, and then uh, his attention sort of moves from from General Periwinkle. <laughs> So it says, uh, perhaps, Mr. Periwinkle, you would accompany, uh... And he sort of looks around to, uh, whoever's nearby, I guess. Uh, Orzov, down to see, uh, Andre. Yes, down in the pits. Perhaps fetch him and, and bring him straight back. Sure, that would be a fine idea. And he, he passes you a small, uh, sort of leaf of... Uh, let ahead and he scribbles a note on it and signs it and says this this will get him released post haste take this with you and he gives you a, a little writ to take with him very well pleasure pleasure meeting you sir I'll be off then all right so you, you head down we'll do a job to get in there uh, as as you're you're down there, it doesn't take you too long it's only sort of five ten minutes uh, and you're on your way back um, with Andre uh, arriving back in the uh, the room where you see Lord um, Cole, Trabro, and uh, Ryla, I assume just finishing up your your discussions, <laughs> just pull, pulling away all sense of uh, you're not actually here looking for obscurity. Your friend's a bit special. Uh, you're just here helping out a mate. I'm assuming is the uh, the, the idea yeah, of that's... carrying on. Yeah. Yeah. He's very old and doddery. Please yeah. excuse him. <laughs> and he buys into it completely. I mean, General Periwinkle, he's a, uh, well, he's a strange sight to begin with, so it doesn't take much for anyone to believe that he's a bit bit past it to start. But as you arrive back with Andre, um, and the conversation is of uh, what is to happen with Isabel, um, Lord Cop sort of says, ah, and here they are now. In fact, perhaps you'd like to... Uh, Make a decision. Uh, now you're all together. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to provide the resources, the men and the, the supplies, to see Isabel safely to El Faber, uh, where more people of her kind uh, could help her recuperate from the the terrible tragedy that has befell her. Her kind what of race is she? She is a uh, what do we call it? The the special kind, uh, um, a legend. That's the one. Huh. All right. Wait. Are I know, I know, yeah. Uh, female a legend, exceedingly rare. Oh. And and often are um, sold as as you can see because of their perceived rarity. Hmm. It's a it's a very mm, bit of the law, so we brush on it briefly. Ah, uh, right. Elven love slaves. Got it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do we trust that this guy's gonna get him? Well, to or get her, I should say, to the safe plate. D -d Didn't Mr. Mapple know her? Maybe he should l look up. Uh, that's a good point. Andre lifts his head and says, uh, If you would allow me to speak my piece, I do have some feelings on the matter. Of course, Mr. Mapples. <laughs> Singular Mapple. And you can call me Andre, friend. And he touches your shoulder. <laughs> oh, okay. Listen. Please don't touch your butt. <laughs> Alright, get very familiar with getting really familiar, and I'm okay with it, but let's get on with it. Uh, he says, uh. Some mixed messages there, <laughs> So he says, um. I mean no offense to you, Lord Kelp, who have released me. I mean no offense to you, my friends, who. I have travelled with, you, despite your you your best intention, <laughs> your you best efforts, I have travelled with you for some time. You've helped me where I've been unable to help myself, and for that I thank you, but 
I trust no one to ensure her safety other than myself. If she is to go to Elfavor, I will travel with her. I would welcome the resources and any manpower you have to spare, but I would not see her go alone. I, do we have any reason to go to Elfland? I, I don't think so. Not particularly. If you want to abandon your mission, you can. I mean... I have to go to some different chapters of the book, but... <laughs> <laughs> Like, we might be the B-team, but we shouldn't be that much of the B-team just to walk off the job. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it might be safer. Last time we didn't walk off the job, we burned down half a city. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of feel like our missions have been just increasingly more dangerous and trying to kill. It seems like we mostly end up fucked up beyond recognition most of the time. What are you talking about? Uh, I mean, you did end up in the stomach of, like, an eldritch beast that you exploded from the end. That was all part of the plan. I'm assuming <laughs> you guys are talking about this in front of... Uh, Literally standing like, in front yeah, of us. Sitting yeah, over actually, like, you did what? And how? And the stomach of a what? <laughs> yeah, uh, just having this conversation right in front of uh. <laughs> well, I mean, you probably noticed I blew up half the arena with uh, several sacks of wood. I, well, I can't deny I saw exceptional prowess, but well, the things you say are extraordinary. You, you fought a malice beast the size of a train, you say? Well, oh, we, were, we were sightseeing. Uh, we heard that this train uh, goes through a lot of beautiful places. We uh, quite enjoy adventuring, you understand. Uh, it's in our nature. Did you know that train goes underwater? It does. It does go underwater. Well, Lord Kelp looks to you all. I see no issue for this man to travel with. Do you all wish to travel with him? Where are these lands? Our favor? Yeah. Fucking donkeys away, mate. Any problem? <laughs> like three donkeys, four. <laughs> uh, I feel like this is that decision in you make in like Morrowind where it says the threads of fate have been. Oh, yeah, that's far away. That's real far where, away. Where, where are we? Trick home. I mean, it's just as far away from Trick home as Sla- So, isn't our destination kind of in the way, on the way? Like, the train's going to go through to Crystal Era. What was going to stop it? Like, wasn't it Sid and Minos or v- no, Vendris? Vendris, yeah. So, yeah. uh, the train, the reason you're on the train, hang on, so, let me just make sure that it is, oh, no, sorry, Looks you're like... in, you're in the lamb. Not tricky. Where is the lamb? But I mean, yeah, if Fendris is the destination of the train, then it's they it's on the way. The same way. <laughs> so you're in the Penance Peaks currently. There we go. I mean, we could escort them as far as Vendris, then it's just a quick little jog across the board. Uh, they are wanting to travel on boat to Elfenga. Well, that's just silly. Uh, they'll backtrack to check on where the, the place was. The, um... I think there's only one thing for it. We've got to split the party. Half on the boat, <laughs> half on the truck. Oh. Yeah, all the volunteers to go with Andre by himself. That's why he's not here tonight. <laughs> uh, well, guys, uh, we did our re- uh, Let's just go take a vacation in L5R. L5R? Yeah. Right, cool. so-
person. <laughs> so, I'm trying to remember, with all the, the crew of like nasty people we took out in the last session, mm -hmm. how many of them were trained peoples? Train peoples? The yes. only How person from the train was Eleanor and Isabel. These were the people that she was meeting here to sell Isabel to. Yeah, like, what I'm saying is when we get back on the train, how awkward of a reception are we going to be getting? No, absolutely fine. Everyone uh, knows yeah. we're cops. Yeah, we're, our recovery has been yeah. born for like the fucking dogs, eh? Yeah, so was, yeah, so obviously Eleanor's been rescued, um, but who was was the other one? What was that? The one that was like all wrapped up in rugs and that was the slave girl, yeah. Uh, the uh, Eladrin Isabel, right? Wasn't that Isabel? Eleanor is the slave. Eleanor's the fat lady trying to sell Isabel. Isabel is uh, the slave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and she escaped though, didn't she? Or uh, yeah, Isabel's been recovered. Eleanor has escaped. Yeah, but then again, I suppose she's probably not gonna be dumb enough to get back on a train full of cops i mean Probably we not. keep getting back on the train and we're cops <laughs> and everyone knew we were cops so as you guys are all discussing who's gonna go where and andre's saying i'm gonna take her to elf Ava, uh the door opens and then walks a guard and uh just beside the guard uh is a very sedated looking uh isabel and she says uh Perhaps I might have a say in where I wish to travel and with whom? No. <laughs> and, uh, you guys note it is the first words Quite that she's right. ever said. Uh, is her voice musical and like a... It's like fairies dancing on your eardrums. I just can't do that, so it sounds exactly like me. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hello, everybody! Uh, Perhaps I might have a say! a fairy! Oh my god. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, you're a free woman. I presume? She sort of stops and she says... Are you presuming she's I free am. or sure she's a woman? <laughs> the free part. She says, uh, I, I am free. It's... I've never had real freedom before. Uh, All you... I know is I want to get far away from, well, Daenor, the Malice Lands, this city, this train. I heard of a woman, a woman by the name of Gale, rising up in Riser, causing a bit of a commotion. I feel like she'd be someone I could get along with. It... Perhaps I'd like to meet her. It just so happens we Question. actually nope. Go ahead, Matt. Could I get a quick refresher on Gale? Gale uh She's Saloon a terrorist. was the yeah, the terrorist, terrorist back in Rise. Oh. The one that you guys met when you were investigating the death of her subordinate who was uh robbing yep, the yep. Daniel consulate. That's it. Uh yeah, we well we just so happen to know. And not in the biblical sense. <laughs> yeah, not in the biblical sense. <laughs> she smiles and says, Perhaps you might write a letter for me to take that would uh, grant me an audience with her. Yeah, sure. Didn't, didn't we have like some sort of fucking thing? Like her bird? Like... Connection oh, there, yeah. something. You had a locket, didn't you? A little. Do we still have that somewhere? To? Yeah, why not? It's probably uh, short range. Like it wouldn't work now. You you could give that to. Oh. Her. It's, like, it's, a, it's not a worldwide like <laughs> whisper. Yo, what's up? I got someone coming to your house. Uh, That's, <laughs> she'll be amazing. there in six to eight weeks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's an Amazon delivery. Fantastic. Um, yeah, you can you can give that to her, and that would certainly prove that. Well, she either got it from you legitimately or killed you, and I don't know, maybe Hannah might still want to see the person she killed you. She wouldn't shed any tears over killing us, so. I don't think we're on bad terms with her, are we? 
Uh, with Gail? Yeah. I think I, we, oh yeah, I think we pretty much did whatever she wanted, didn't we? Yeah, Gail's like the one person there that doesn't want to murder it. Oh, it's lovely. Hey, Delft hey. likes us. And also your, your cop boss, your detective inspector Stella Delft. Delft. Yeah. Yeah, Delft, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Actually, but chief, you, didn't we run, didn't we, like, give him a concussion when we, like, rocketed him through several floors? That was when you were saving his <laughs> life, though. I said, yeah, I mean, it's for us to pay. Yeah, plus we got him, like, multiple fucking promotions. I mean, yeah, I think he'll, yeah. like... I, this, this is what I mean, he's, he's now Chief Inspector Stoverdale. And he gave himself yeah. that concussion when I handed him the rocket back. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess all in all, it's worth a few brain cells. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know whoever, if you guys, like, uh, I'm down to give her that locket, you know? Yeah. Just tell them, mention our name. Or, don't. And, uh, Either way. Andre, um, tips his fedora and says, lady, let's, oh, uh, God. let's, no, no. <laughs> it's the only thing he's wearing, just a fedora. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, uh, requests that he be allowed to transfer, transfer. Transport. <laughs> transport her to Riser uh, to meet this lady, and, and she agrees, thanking him. Um, and with that, I guess this, this meeting is, is finished, right? You guys got anything more you so, want to ask either of them or Lord Kelp? Kelp, sorry. So this is kind of out of character, so I don't think Periwinkle knows enough or would care enough. But uh, so was Mr. Mapple? Was that just an act, or was he like under some sort of mindfuck spell, or was that was he just playing the part of a weirdo nudist guy? You get the impression that it was a little bit of an act, um, but Doc Riley, you you know some of it was real. <laughs> that time in the top. Yeah, you know, it wasn't all lies. Yeah, it wasn't all an act. Like, he's <laughs> got a few screws loose, but he doesn't seem to be a bad Don't we all? Yeah. I think us especially kind of don't really have any room to talk. No. Uh, so, I'm sorry. It's, like, uh, I'm kind of brain farting here. Kelp is... he is he, like, the main man? Or does he, he's like, run the, the arena? He's sort of the lord of this sort of city and yeah it does run the arena by default okay uh does he have a ring on his feet he does not okay good question okay, uh also is he an elf no kelp kelp yeah no Huh. Is Elvin particularly, like, common? Or not common, but is it, like, not so uncommon as to be rare? Um, it's kind of like Italian. I, I don't understand that. Italy, but not really anywhere else. Yeah. Alright, hmm, interesting. Um, I'm going to be back in two seconds, I just need to check a dog cage and... Take it with the dogs out of my, out of my house. Oh, okay. Two minutes. All right, buddy. I've just looked at my character sheet, and apparently Periwinkle has 22 intelligence. I sure as hell have not You're been playing a lot. <laughs> Dude, Jesus. All Maybe right, well, my is... intelligence is just on a completely different level, and it just... Um, and it just appears that I'm a complete and utter... Well, it's okay, because I've got 22 wisdom and I get swallowed by hell beasts. So. Yeah, I was going to say, what's uh, what's Periwinkle's wisdom? Nine. Yes, okay, yeah, oh, yeah, that's fine. Lot. Yeah, dude. You can be intelligent, but just completely oblivious. The idiot yes. savant. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of surprised that nobody tried to go and hush me up, but I suppose just making me seem like a complete not a senile idiot probably works just well we did try and hush you up multiple times actually periwinkle didn't didn't hear a thing <laughs> it's the old age your hearing's not what it used to be yeah 
No, it's fine. Uh, the way uh, I see sorry. it is. Oh no, go ahead, Wood. I was gonna say, yeah, I, I probably in terms of wrecking the game should probably rein it in, but I, I did find do find it quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, the way I see it is, uh, are like these people who think we're already spies, or people who would be curious if we're spies or not, just gonna believe if you come out and say, "Hey, yeah, we're fucking secret agents." Like, I mean, I can't. I mean, imagine. that's the thing is, like, we're already at the point where the cover was well and truly blown anyway, so it's. I mean, look at look at how we treat people in real life. Who just say like, "Hey, I work for the CIA." You just kind of sound fucking crazy. Yeah, and if anything, you you know, Periwinkle's probably gonna do a good job of, you know, making it seem like either like these guys are just completely insane and incompetent, and you they probably don't need to worry about. I mean, we are. Yes. Yeah. To be fair, we are. We're we're insane and we're incompetent, but they do need to worry about us. (laughs) Good point. Good point. How many mind scars am I at now? Three? Oh, oh yeah, yes. I should actually... I should really start fucking role-playing that shit, because I definitely have a mind scar that would make things interesting. I've been role-playing mine, that's why I keep setting things on fire and exploding shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're fun, Iron. As the, uh, the meeting is adjourned, and uh, they start to prepare their journey uh, back west and then south, uh, no, I don't have the shotgun. Um, Lord Culp stops you, Ryla, before you leave. And he says, uh, The G Air Boy. The one that travelled on the train with you. Keep an eye for him. It's not to be trusted. And then he lets you go. I'll, uh, nod to him. Oh, damn it. All my notes are on, actually. I should have been able to access Dimitri, shouldn't I? See if I can copy notes over. Well, sorry, I already know that Jir's uh, a fucking obscure. I, from that, like, secret party and shit, Jir, uh, Jir's the, uh, the, the, like, the royal dude. The Luke Skywalker guy. The Luke yeah. Skywalker Luke. guy, yeah. Han and Leia. Liam. Yeah. Uh, he's Obscurati, uh, that girl with the fucking cyber arm that kicked my shit in, uh, she's his bodyguard, but she's actually not Obscurati, she's just, like, a super badass bodyguard chick. Yeah, and I think the girl with him is, though, I can't remember off it. So have we actually got some confirmed, like, people we know are Obscurati? Oh yeah, dude, I got that info from that secret party I invaded. Oh, sweet. So now, basically, you found the people that are going to lead you to this Obscurati meeting in Vendris that you're trying to invade, and you're hoping yeah. Luke, is, Luke is your ticket. Do we know if any of the other train patrons are still possible members, or do we think we've got all the people that we need? I think we had some suspicions. Like, wasn't the, the dwarf, he was kind of suspicious. Uh, with his luck? Yeah, yeah, the one... Didn't you kill him? Not yet. Wait, did we? I don't think so. I think yeah, we no. specifically saved him. I think you're right. Lucky for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember, did it, he seemed to have a doohickey that was didn't it? it didn't seem like it was the luck thing was inherent to him, it was sort of the device he had. Yes. There was something about him that indicated he was abnormally lucky and not yeah. by any natural means i'm just wondering if it's a thing that i'm kind of surprised we haven't actually tried to steal it if, it, if that's what it i suppose uh, that would sorry man. go ahead oh nothing never mind i'm just musing no no go ahead man i'm interested oh i just basically said i'm kind of surprised that we haven't tried to steal whatever it is that makes them lucky yet. Because hmm. we've already got plenty, plenty of luck. Because <laughs> I think he... I, I'm pretty sure like there was some sort of thing he had that seemed like that was what was causing it, but I could be... And in any case, Periwinkle doesn't know any of this shit. 
Um, How many of those rings do we have? At the very least, two. Which rings? The ones that do what? The, the obscurity, the obscurity rings. rings. Oh, yeah, you've got one from the chick, the cop that was corrupt, and one from the guy that was killed yes, by... Kai. Oh, the demon, devil dude, the gun. No, Boone didn't have a ring, did he? No. no. He didn't. No, it was the guy the that guy from way back, back in the in city the... that you got the yeah. the message of the meeting in Vendrys from. He was like from. a mobster guy or something. Oh, uh, he... And didn't he get, like, killed by a weird freaky By Sijin, which was the creature that had inhabited uh, yeah. your your mind person. Bravo. Yeah, oh, he, uh, yeah, that's yeah. now in my head. Yeah. Zambria. Yeah, so he had gone into Zambria and taken over her and just sort of, I guess, dis dislocated her soul and mind, which now inhabits you. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, Caius Bergeron. That's on the one, Caius Bergeron, that's it. Fuck, I can't yeah. believe how much shit this campaign has had happen. <laughs> fucking fucking Trabro has got... Uh, I've got all sorts damage. of issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Kai's got, like, his brain exploded by yeah. that guy. She was, like, an, a creature from Apet, right? Or Apep or whatever yes. that place is. Ap Apet. The, uh, the, the realm that you guys pushed that giant thing back into with the train. Right. The, it's train. like the plane of ruin. Yeah, dude, don't you remember that? It was fucking amazing. When the RHC headquarters were attacked and down in the bottom, also found that big fucking get him like giant beast and then rode a train into it to force it back into the wall. That was such a good time. That was such it a good was. Time. We fucking tied the, uh, the, like, sigil to the front of the train. Yeah, the, the golden plate, right? The thing that's yeah. the, the portal? Yeah. Fucking perfect. So All right, so the next morning, Joshua. Uh, Joshua. <laughs> next oh, morning, the I... train departs. Oh, yep, go ahead. Sorry, I was just wondering. This is kind of not related to the, like their current mission, but I kind of wanted to ask sometime between while we were talking to Kelvin before we left, uh, ask him where he learned uh, Elvin from. He just smiles curious. and says. Probably the same school as you, sir. And offers nothing more. Seemingly right. blissfully unaware of the fact that you are in fact Elvin. <laughs> oh yeah. But he he does obviously mean not naturally. Right. Okay. He seems to think you're part of some sort of organization that you must certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just uh Give him a side smile and nod. <laughs> Try a bit. So, oh no, I probably I was again. Periwinkle wouldn't have noticed, but when I was talking about the obscurity before, he was looking. A, was he looking a bit worried before? You know, before everybody, you know, stared a Periwinkle away from it. Yes, he certainly reacted at. Your mention of the word obscurity, but then when everyone was like, he's just insane, he sort of put it down to, oh, I guess he's just insane. Probably just heard that word somewhere, maybe nearby, and hmm. thinks it is exactly what it is, but doesn't know that it is. That sort of thing. But you don't know if he's worried because he is obscurity, he has no ring, and he's, he he's warned you of a because... member. Not, he's, he hasn't warned you that that member is Obscurati, he just warned you to be wary of the one person you know to be Obscurati. Yeah. Like, he definitely seems like he's part of some sort of Illuminati type thing, but mm. I, I don't know. Do we know, like, is there a, like, air oh, quotes, you know good of. Illuminati? There's no free your Mason. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are the least, Zentar? Yeah, there's no, no, no Zentar. No, there's nothing you know of. Yet? God damn it, I'm curious now. I'm gonna keep this in mind and write it down in my notes. Alrighty. So the next morning the train departs at 7.30am. Uh, you guys are all back on board uh, and there's a light snowfall rolling downhill out of the Penance Peak and uh, 
the train follows it uh, before it comes into a slightly warmer atmosphere and the, the snow abates to a light rain. Um, as you head towards Chrysalia, Chris, that, that place, uh, you, oh my god, children, um, you sort of by mid morning, the, the sleet that's coming down is still freezing on the ground. It's still cold enough to be uh, making the area rather morbid and depressing. Um, but the train's running worse. You guys have, have been on this train in, in worse weather and worse situations. Um, and Malia and the other train guards all assure everyone that there's no danger. This is all perfectly normal. All perfectly normal. Fif Fifteen minutes um, before the train is due to arrive in Sidminos. Uh... Malia makes the rounds through the train and asking you all uh, as usual to please return to your seats so you can keep an eye on your personal effects as we arrive in this this new station um, though the train has been assaulted by a monster and brigands so far she's proud to announce that nothing has been stolen from the very important passengers uh, and Malia wants to keep it that way again she reminds you the enclaves are busy often thick with opportunistic thieves and it's easy f in the commotion for someone to nick any unattended valuables. Uh, she leaves the, the cart and uh, you see from your, your window seats or wherever you may be sitting, um, you, you approach down the coast towards the, the township of Sidmanos, coming in with a good daylight of hour to spare in this day. Um, light rain still obscures your view, but the air itself is clean, thick with the fresh scent of the sea and only the train's own smoke to ruin the, the beautiful sights. Um, all of a sudden, the gas lamp in your room flickers red and then starts to deepen to purple. Uh, the sound of rain swiftly fades away, more sudden than you'd expect. Uh, and outside, you see the sky begin to turn black. The time is 5.12pm. Uh. You're about 10 minutes out of Sidmanos when this occurs. I thought we were out of the land where freaky shit was supposed to happen. <laughs> Well, time for some more fucked up shit to happen, I guess. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, could I please, um, before oh, no. you guys react, because this might not actually have been all of you. Oh no. I embrace it. <laughs> you don't resist? Sure. I don't know what it is. Oh my god. Okay, it hits all of you. I couldn't have resisted you anyway. Oh boy. That's what I mean. Rolling a 33. Yeah. <laughs> you embrace it. Okay, I'm d so before I tell you exactly what's happening, I need to know how much you know of what's happening. So I don't want to say too much just yet. One second. I pull it up because this is, it's shit's about to get real. Is this train fueled on witch oil by any chance? I think everything's fueled by witch oil. It's Perfect. witch oil all the way down. Oh, I have no. a plan. No, no, your plan is to blow things. So I also, let me give you a long rest before this happens. Oh, thank God. Yeah. So, uh, you guys all feel a weird sensation like you're being pulled. Just momentarily pulled in every direction and then pulled to within, like squished. But it's a definite tugging sensation pulling you tighter and tighter and then it relaxes for a moment. Trevor, you notice this like Zambria's okay. consciousness is gone. What? So this isn't like going through the moor on the the Hellbeat? No. <laughs> Hello. Your mind is no. completely clear. You guys hear 
Uh, no longer any rumble of the train, no longer any beat of the rain on the windows. Just silence, you're standing in this carriage, and then you hear an echoing call out from Trabro. Hello? Uh, didn't we go through something like this? No, 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 this is... I swear, like, the church... Or when we were rescuing, what's his name? The 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 precinct? No, 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 no. Uh, way way back. Fuck. Uh, they made all those gates, like that were were impassable. Am I the only one who remembers this shit? <laughs> Thank you, my pay. Uh. Um, I shot the dude in the neck to pretend like a. That doesn't narrow anything down. <laughs> There's been a few sort of planar events. Like the, I know again, Perry Wrinkle doesn't, but at the start of the game, there was that weird yellow place we crossed over into. But I can't remember. I don't think we sort of felt like we were being like squished or pulled or anything. There was weird shit happening like this leading up to the big fight where we were um you know that led to you know us chucking a train at the beast where shit all got all in court real and stuff yeah but i'm guessing this is something kind of like that but maybe don't so as you guys are sort of trying to figure out what's going on um you notice that Reality around you seems to be dimming. Seems to be... Dimming. Edges of objects and furniture is fading. You look around the cabin. You look out the door of the cabin that you're in. You see no passengers. You see no other people. The landscape beyond is completely a blur. In fact, no further than 20, 30 meters in any direction you can see. But even the train that you're in, everything is dimming. Everything is beginning to fade out of existence. You have the sinking feeling that should you not figure out what is happening and fast, you will dim along with it until there is nothing left. Zambria! Tobacco pipe and look, did I smoke some bad pipe weed or something? <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll take, I'll take out one of the rings. Is it react? Just like looking at it. You reach to where the ring was in your pocket and your hand passes through your clothing and there is nothing in your pocket to grasp. grasp. There is nothing. You are incorporeal right now. Oh boy. I tap my heels together three times, saying there's no place like home. As you do it, you hear uh, tap, 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 there's no place like home. And you hear a uh, a scream from down the, the, the train hallway. Well, that's our siren call. Off we go. Home is full of screaming. <laughs> <laughs> So as you, as you go out the cabin door to see what the screaming is, you see what appears to be another ghostly figure, similar to yourself, beginning to fray the edges, uh, holding two ghostly pistols and firing wildly at spirits that are floating through the train, whipping past as fast as, as if they're, they were standing still on the track and just passing through all walls of the train as it travels down the, road, the, the track. Sorry. And it's shooting at them, and as they, they go past, their arms are reaching out to claw at this person. And a couple of the times they, they catch onto it and slash at him, and he cries out in pain. And as he turns to shoot at one that's whipped past and is, is now between you and him, you see the face of Oliver Boone, the serial killer philanderer that you killed on top of the train less than a few days ago. Are, are we...
I, I, I don't know. Like Zambria's dead, but she was always in my head. Now, 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 now. This is. Does does Boone notice us? Uh, he does. He sees you, and his eyes widen with fear, and he says, "You as well." What has he done to us? And he begins to run down the train towards you. You're dead, motherfucker. He says, yes, I was dead, but now... I was dragged here. I was an eternity away, and now I'm... I'm back. I was... It's Luke. It's, it's goddamn Lantern. Oh, motherfucker, as soon as you said that, I'm fucking up. Okay, but there's no room in my head for anyone else. <laughs> well, I mean, there is right now, but... So what are Just you doing, right, sir? Oh, uh, I'm going to go find Luke. So I already this, know that. This Sorry, train, guys. other than you, Boone, and these spirits that are whipping through, the train is empty, but... Roll me a perception, everyone, please. Plus 15. Uh, Ryla and Trabro, you both recognize some of these things that are whipping past. They're faces you've seen before, and it takes you a moment, but Ryla, you realize first one of them that whips past and attempts to slash at you uh, does so, catches a corner of you, and you feel the force of it. Whatever it is, it, it can connect with you as if you were both flesh and blood. Uh, but you see in its face, it's not anger or violence that's driving it. It's fear. They're trying to grab onto you to stay. And you see that they are... The, the face of this person is one of the people that was killed on the train when the Malice Beast first came on. Another one whips, whips past and attempts to grab onto Boone. And you see... It is familiar... Different, but familiar. And it, it takes you a moment to realize that the face and body of this thing whipping past is actually the intact form of one of the girls you found that Boone had suspended in an alleyway. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah guys, I... there's some freaky voodoo shit going on. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I imagine Periwinkle was a bit out of his league because this is he hasn't really been exposed to any of the weird shit in this camp. He... He's probably going to be like, bad man, what's what's going on? You you you're seeing this this? Don't don't worry, we'll get to the bottom of it. Getting far too used to seeing shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame uh, Orzov isn't here because his character would know exactly what happened the moment this happened to. <laughs> God damn it, <laughs> Orzov. Yeah, I mean, as much as you guys know, you know you're not in the bleak gate, which is where that stuff was, uh, those portals were, that the things were attacking the city through and rise up. You're not in the bleak gate. Um, and this place isn't just empty, it's ethereal and unreal. It's distinctly different to anywhere you've been before. Um, I will take an arcana or a nature DC check from everyone to see if you guys have any inkling of what is going on. Like, as a player, I'm guessing that we're in, like, the, yeah, I guess the ethereal plane or something like that. We've shifted planes somehow, but, again, I don't think this is... Oh, apparently I've got a decent arcana. Nice. Or what? So, uh... Oh, nice, all of you, actually. It's a DC-10. Um, you guys oh. <laughs> know that in many common folklores, uh, there is always some variation of the land of the dead. Uh, in folklore common to Riser, uh, it's the land that is said to lie on the far side of the Bleak Gate, which is the between realm that you guys have previously travelled in. Um, and that, in the land of the dead, ghosts are said to persist. Uh, Never more than, say, three miles from where they died. You don't know why it's that, but you have the inkling that, given that you're on a 
train moving fast and that everything is dimming as you travel along it um it's possible that it's some immutable law of nature that these ghosts can't move further than three miles from where they entered perhaps something worse than death awaits those that do so basically so we're fucking Boone, what the talking? fuck's going on? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good plan there, uh, Job Bro. Boone says, uh, Oh, that's a shame. I've seen him doing experiments with that that godforsaken lantern of his. He always keeps it safe. Always near him. Every time we stopped oh, it, he, he tried it. It's... No, 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 no. You remember when all that water turned to fire? Few cities back? I don't know if he was alive then. Fuck, I hope he was, otherwise this wouldn't make sense. Yeah, he was. Yeah, that was the city we found out what he was up. I would bet anything it has something to do with Atlanta. And then, uh, as he's sort of speaking with you, you realize for a moment that one of the things coming down the train is not whipping through like the other one. This one is uh, moving along the train like you guys are. Just yeah. cruising along. And one of these things, uh, somewhat bigger, more substantial, more corporeal almost, especially in comparison to you. And this thing rears up and its arm turns into a, a sort of spear for a moment. Like it just elongates and sharpens to a point and plunges into Boone's shoulder. He lets out a scream of agony and you see a ghostly spurt of blood shoot out of his arm and then disappear in midair. Can I cut the arm off? Of this thing reaching out? You absolutely can. You can roll initiative, in fact. Do we really want to help out Boone, though? I mean, he's just kind of our only source of information at the moment. And this I thing is like two feet from you, and if it's hitting Boone, it's no stretch to think that this thing is going to hurt you too. Oh yeah, that's... All right, so... Um, one sec. That's the thing, um, some people's in, uh, initiatives are going to get shuffled. Um, I mean, this rate's so far ahead of us anyway. Unless you want to push Quinn above it. Which one is it? Yeah, so four off me. Um, one will get plus one will get plus six, and one will get plus four. So. So who's getting six? So yeah, so Quinn will get plus six, and I guess uh, I hate to fucking do it. But do it. Boone. Yeah, Boone plus four. And you've taken the four Quinn. off me? Nope. 31 or 41. And you go down to... Doesn't matter, because you're still... Uh, yeah. About the trouble. Let me take those off here. There you go. Okay. Oh boy. Quinn, you're up. Oh. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, oh, hold on. That should not have that attack minus two on me anymore. Uh, uh... Sorry, I don't remember what I could do here. It's been a while. You pull out the knock gun. I feel like I should save that. For what is it? Gopher is that it? What was that gather gun? Oh, oh the, the gopher badger. Launcher. The badger gun. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, what? let's go with that. I'm gonna use my badger. Gun. 
That's oh, not gonna hit. Shot. I'm gonna hero I point. I can do a thing. I can do a oh. thing. Okay. I have a reaction. Uh. Ah. Uh, hmm. No, it needs to be my Earth of Immunity target. I haven't targeted it yet. Well, that's all right. I'll, I'll hero point. Yeah. All right. Here. Uh. Okay. A dreaming badger appears in an unoccupied square adjacent to the target, and the target is grabbed by the bad. Uh, the badger has my defenses and hit points equal to half my bloodied value, and if it's destroyed, I lose a healing surge. When you use a move action, you may have the badger use move action as well. You may spend a standard action to have it attack. Its attack bonus is equal to your attack bonus with the badger gun. Apply the weapon's critical property to the badger attack. Uh, I still get damage for the shot, though, right? I hope so. Because it doesn't say I don't. Well, when you fire the badger right, does it say that it has a damage line? Uh, yes, 1d8 damage, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. half damage, huh? Cool. And the grab Man, does so not bad. hold. The badger immediately falls through this thing. That's unfortunate. Uh, then as a minor act, I'll use uh, Dark Fire. Uh, how does this work again? Uh, oh, okay. Um, sh 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 until the end of my next turn, all attacks against the target have combat advantage, and the target cannot benefit from invisibility or... Wait, is that how that works? Did I do that right? I didn't, I didn't give it combat advantage to that. No. Yes. Oh, yes, he did, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> my bad. Well, all you guys have combat advantage against this thing till the end of my next turn. Okay, boom. He is gonna turn. He's gonna use getaway gun. He's gonna shoot it. Which goes twice. He uses his action to shoot twice, which hits. Oh, then he uses off. his move action to shift the way through you guys, putting himself between, or putting you guys between himself and it. And then he's going to use his minor action to make two more shots. Okay, so he hit three times. The bullets hit, but they seem to do sweet fuck off. But this thing does move slower for a moment, and he shouts, They have crippled it! I've done my bit! You take care of it! And then the wraith uh, lets out almost a, a cackle when he, when he says that, uh, and flies straight down the hallway through all of you to hear. And in doing so, smashes each and every one of you. Don't give away our position, Dan. Yeah, Dan. I can't see them. I'm looking Yeah, I don't see him either. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh, was my mic 
stuck. Sorry, I was, yeah. Was even. Um, can I do so a... I should be able... Yeah. This will count as a hit attack, won't it? Yes. Um, I'm going to shout out a warning to, I don't know, I guess, Ryla. She'll give him plus two to, uh, to defences against the attack. This is an interrupt. And he... Ah, oh, wait, sorry. Uh, can I do it to Trabro? Sure. Uh, so he gets a plus two to defences against it, and he can make a melee basic attack as a free action. Sweet. So it misses him anyway. And yeah, you get your free attack, Trabro. Sweet. So I take it that we don't get an opportunity attack? No, it was a shift. And both Ryla, you're slammed against the room that way. And General Periwinkle, you're slammed that way. Is, is there a map up? Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Did I not share it? Hey! <laughs> I thought you were doing like Theater of the Mind. Nope, I'm terrible. Oh, that's true. That's okay, but. I guess it's a bit more clear now, right? Why I was saying he goes there. And, and not describing anything. <laughs> yes. Fucking useless, Jesus. Oh, so I got slammed through a, like, a doorway? Bolt. Is he still doing stuff? No, sorry, that was it. Trapper done his hit back. Come on, Dan. Quit, quit. I'm, I'm taking your turn. I know, I know. Um, I think that Perry Winkle is going to do a guileful switch with the uh, Rylar. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to take his place in initiative. He's going to take my place, and he gets another. Uh, all right. Uh, cool. Oh, you're definitely not going to regret that. I have, like, zero <laughs> actual attacks. I shout at you guys and make you guys do the work. Sounds just like my real life. All right. <laughs> you're a floor manager. Oh, close enough. Uh, I'm going to move up here. Since normal guns obviously don't work. Do it. Uh... I'm going to minor action use Hunter Score. And I'm going to use Quick Shot using my Frosty Frosty Hand Cause. Uh, God damn it. I guess I'm not going to do. Do I really want. Nah, I'm not going to use a hero point here. It's not. Sorry, Perry Winkle. I'll let you down. It's so, okay. Next turn, I'll be able to give you a thing to re -roll. Okay. Yep. And as far as I know, that's a permanent change in initiative. I think we. I think Az has just swapped from. All right. Yeah, yeah, no. Initiative doesn't change again after that. Yep. So yep. I'll be 34 and you, you'll be 17. That's cool. I deserve it. Here we go. 
So technically that goes down there, right? Yeah, so it's now honey badgers go. Yeah. Uh... I can't actually do anything. He operates on my... Alright, try it. If I was in the doorway behind me, would I be able to attack the square that I'm current? That one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'll do my free shift move to go... I will mark it as my Oath of Enmity time. Or myself, whatever. Yeah. You'll you figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll figure it out. And I will use Abjure Undead, which is close burst five. Ooh, what does that do? Abjure Didn't read that far. Undead. It sounds good. <laughs> it does sound good. <laughs> I forgot you were an Avenger. Uh, I can... Uh, hits and pulls it. He's one of the Avengers. My hit? I pull the target a number of squares equal to one plus my wisdom modifier. Target is also immobilized until the end of next... Ooh, ruthless. Okay, all right. Uh, roll the attack. See if I hit. hit. Yeah. As a brilliant ray of radiant power shoots out from you towards the undead foe. Yeah, all right. So it gets pulled adjacent to you? Yep. It is and I do 3d10 damage. And it's radiant wow. damage. Wow. And yes, if he's an adventurer, that's correct. He's one of the adventurers. So you actually, when you deal radiant damage, you fuck it up. I fuck it up? Yeah, it is. Uh, currently off. It's no longer phasing and you deal full damage. And it's no longer phasing. It is no longer phasing or insubstantial. In that case, oh. I'm going to go all in. All right. It does solidify not any more than you guys, but certainly more than it was before. And you see it, it is very much more grounded in this location. I'm going to action point. Okay. So what level are you guys? Good Nine. question. Yeah, so you should have done an extra d10 there. You're at 4d10, not 3d10. Because that, that levels up with your level, so you can update that. Oh, chuck in another d10, that's fine. Okay. I will... Strength of many it. Okay. I gain a plus. Two action pointed, right? Yes. Oh, there's a thingy for that. Yeah. It's just point, uh, gonna, gonna say that. Mr. Warlord. Uh, so... if, if it's healing, just don't press any buttons yet. When an ally who says spends an action to do... Hang on, let me... This is gonna... I need to read. Ally spends an action point to take an extra action and uses it. Da, 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 da. You gain a bonus to damage equal to one half your level plus your intelligence modifier. Holy shit. One half uh, my level. Rounding down? I think that's usually how it works. Plus your yeah. intelligence modifier. Which is zero. Uh, in that your intelligence modified general period? Um, I don't know. Plus your... Oh, my... Oh, your... Oh, boy. So that would Ooh. be uh, half your level plus six. So is that healing? Nah, that is bonus to... He's using that uh, as he's using that to make an attack, isn't it? I am. So that is... Um, that's all to damage. And if the attack doesn't hit, then it goes to temporary hit. But, uh, yeah, as long as he hits, it goes to damage. I'm using a daily, so, oh, I don't have to. Nice. 
nice, easy hit. Do you still do half damage even though he's corporeal now? No, it is currently inactive. And then plus how much? Plus. Oh, you would add it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be four plus six, so plus ten. Assuming that AC is meant to go on you. Uh, no, on the ruin race. It gains AC. Oh, minus two. Oh, minus shit, two. Put that on again. I, I took it off because I'm blind and I didn't see the minus. <laughs> That's gonna be a short yeah, it <laughs> Okay, Perry Winkle, you're up. Right, so I'm gonna use a commander's strike on Trabro along with a overwhelming force trap. So you get to use any of your at wills against this creature. It doesn't have to be a basic attack, it can be any at will melee attack. Good lord. I I use my rocket belt. <laughs> Is that a melee? Is that an at will attack? It's a move. As long as it says you can use it as a basic attack, that's fine. But if it, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be a. No, I'm, with overwhelming force trap, it's any at will. It doesn't have to be oh, a basic shit. So as long as it's green and it's melee, it's. Oh. Sorry, so at what point does something go up a damage dice? Oh, and you also get a bonus to uh, plus six to damage when you... If you... Jesus. Fucking warlords, man. Uh, your Abjure Undead, and I've already up updated it to 40 attempt, because that goes up at level five, and then again at level 11. Should, Should that, that still be half? Ah, uh, yes, was a plus six. Uh, no, that shouldn't still be half. It seems to be set on the round instead of the um, 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 his turn. Sorry, it's off. Oliver Byrne runs to the end of the hallway. As he gets down to about there, he looks around and he says, "This place, we've got a." We've got to find the... And then he, he just goes out of, out of sight, out of ear, earshot. Runeraith is immobilized. Damn. Fucks it right up. Hey. So instead he turns to... Um, Trabro. Who appears to be the one holding him there and pouring radiant fire on him. And uh, it's emaciated fingers reach out towards you, same as it tried to. God damn, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're unable to get purchase on you. What is your AC? Ah, oh, one off. Fuck. Yep. Fucking one off. Alright. Oh, thank God it has an action point. Okay, it's going to use its action point. And it's going to try that again. And it's going to cry when it... Yay! <laughs> it hits. <laughs> and it smashes you... Uh, or rather, its claws rip into you and uh, you feel as it grabs onto you your energy, your strength being uh, sapped and you're weakened. Uh, as it grabs into you as well, you see it begin to shimmer uh, and you see you feel like the the effect your radiant damage had on it has now subsided somewhat. Uh, well, you guys have got this, right? Fully. Uh -huh. Alright. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, like, I got, a, I got an inkling here that uh, Mr. Boone was saying we have to find something, and I'm going to go ahead and guess that something is probably that fucking lantern he was talking about. Uh, so I'm going to break out. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, shit. Can I jump without provoking an opportunity? Do you... Wait, what? Can I jump away without provoking an opportunity attack? You can shift one what? square. Don't, don't want to shift. Fuck. Can't you do a shift and then an action point to move? Mm-hmm. Yep, you can do that. Or... Wait, can't I shift and then downgrade my attack action to a move? Yes. That way I don't have to waste the extra point. So shift. Yep. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. I don't remember the 4 year rolls too well. Can I attack then move? I just can't split it, split it right? I just can't split Correct. it. You just can't, if you're doing like multiple attacks, you can't split them along your movement. Or you, and you right. can't split your movement by moving, attacking, and then finishing. Uh, Alright, well. That's cool. Then I don't really need to uh, shift or downgrade anything. I'm going to use... Uh... Don't worry, it doesn't provoke an opportunity okay. attack. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, bud. Don't worry, it's all good. I'm going to move or shift. Uh, damn it. Wait, periwinkle small, right? I can share a space. Wait, what? You normally can't share spaces with allies, right? But Correct. he's small. Unless they're, you're both small. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just shift one and then move past him. Out the uh, window, right? Don't... Uh, we're still moving on a train, my guy. It's a ghost it's not train. in this reality. <laughs> Shit, I can't remember. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm able to move. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, literally oh how I imagined a guy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, he was right there because I... Wait, no. No, that's not... He was right there, right? Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I'm really fucking fucked up right now. Uh, all right, so move uh, shift. Right, blah, blah, blah. Okay, then move six. Uh, I Can I open the door as a free action or is that an action action? Because I, I assume that's a door to the next train. Yes. Card. Thing. So the way you're heading is towards the locomotive. Oh, fuck! It's not the locomotive next. I'm saying like that's the direction along the train that you're going. And I don't really know uh, which direction the I need to go. Pants quarters is towards where Boone's going. No, oh, the fancy it... pants quarters is towards where you're going. Oh, all right. Well then, yeah. And uh, I'm sorry. Did you say that it's an action to open the door, or is it free? Not free. All right, then I'll open the door and end my turn. Everybody get on the floor and do the dinosaur. Honey badger probably does nothing, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Terrible. Oh, he's my Every free shift for one. Okay, all right. Uh, for a minor action, I'll use my Holy Adversary's Armor, which I haven't set up. Yeah. Uh, it gives me plus two resist. He kills you as a real... Yeah. <laughs> Not good. No, I. Two can play at that game, motherfucker. <laughs> so you're phasing this. <laughs> So I guess that means you can hit each other, right? I, I guess so. <laughs> Was that uh, radiant damage you just dealt? It wasn't. Uh... No, just damage. Right. 
kill it. Okay, so yeah, it does I've resistance. I've only got a couple radiant move. Why did that half it twice? Because uh, I'm weakened. Yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, so I think we've got the save at ends of turn automatically, so you shouldn't need to save it now. Just automatically remove it. Yep, nice, cool. So you're no longer weakened. Uh, Perry Quinkle. You see your your ally Trabro seemingly gaining some energy back as he slams Hello. into the creature. So, I've got this, General. All right. Good, good job, lad. That's it. Give him a good, good tally ho and a what for. <laughs> Um, I'm going to, as a miner, use an active stratagem, which will give a, so, uh, plus, another plus six damage to your, uh, da, da, da. yeah, power bonus of damage rolls equal sweet, so, let's see if I can cast this on you, uh, where are we, adaptive stratagem? Um, okay, that's given you a, a two damage and saves, where it should be an either or, but uh... It's alright, it, it'll fall off and it wouldn't make a save before it does. So. And as a standard, I'm going to use my destructive surprise daily, so... Now, I'm going to try dragging this power onto your spreadsheet, onto your portrait. Does... Has that appeared in your power list, or I might need Dan to do it? There's a power called Destructive Surprise Attack. It's a free action that you will should, will now be able to use, Trabra. I do not see it. Uh, okay, Dan, you might Dan. need to give him the Destructive Surprise Attack. Should be there now under free action. Oh, yes. It's not set up, so attack... What's your main attack stat? Strength? Wisdom. Which is better out of strength or dex? Dex, because it would give me more armor? No, I mean, like, which of your attack stats is better? Neither. Your dex is a plus three, so that's better than plus zero from strength. Oh, right, right, yeah. <laughs> and the damage will be... Free weapon plus dex. Get half damage on this. Cool, there you go, set up. Okay, boom. So does he get to use that now or just on his turn? Uh it's a fr it's a free action. Free actions can be at any time, can't they? Or do they uh, or do they need to be on your turn? What gives them that again? What's the skill? Destructive the destructive surprise. surprise daily power. So I use that, and it basically grants a power to. That's really good. Oh yeah, so you use it now, Trevor. Excellent. Okay, so free actions are literally anytime, anywhere. Yeah, but you can only make one free action attack. Per turn. Can we still give hero points to other people? Yep. I will hero point up. Hang on, how does a hero point work when I'm rolling twice? You re roll once. Okay. Ah. Uh, Let's spend another. Rough. Yeah! <laughs> Fuck this guy! <laughs> and he grants coming advantage to an extent as well. Nice. Hell yeah. And that uses my weapon damage, does it? Three, Three. weapon damage. It's set up oh. so the damage dice should work. Excellent. I'll have a look. Because there's lots of crit bonus dice on this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good lord. God damn it, it's only half. Oh no! Yeah, it's not. It's not radiant or anything. 
But at least it's not weakened. Like, you're not weakened, I should say. Sure. Yeah. That was some um, pretty good rolls, too. Look at all those fours. Well, crits are automatically maximized during battle. Oh, are they? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, what's the really good rolls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 4 e, uh, all your dice are maximized, and then you roll bonus crit dice if your weapon has them. 5e is the one where you roll twice the amount of crit dice. Right. So his normal weapon dice is 2d4, and so he rolls 3 of them, so uh, 64. Oh, and then it's a what, plus 2 weapon, so you've got 2d8 crit or something. Something, 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 something. Who knows? Something like that. It's been so long, I'm so rusty on all what you guys have. <laughs> A lot of love, Spike. That's what oh. we have. A lot of love. love. Okay, Dougie, Dougie, Bluggy. Uh, the Rune Wraith is going to turn around to you and be like, This ain't going to do shit, he says. Uh, and then it's going to uh, attempt to th move through the two of you again, giving chase to Ryla. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As it moves through you two, it does its little hurl which also sucks, but he does finally hit Trabro, uh, tossing you into the room above, just slamming you That's out fine. of the way, uh, floating over the top of General Periwinkle and giving chase to Ryla. Uh, and it is now Ryla's turn. Uh, well, I already opened the door, so I just got to get on the floor and do the dining. Um, just one quick thing. Yes. It ended its turn. I've just got triggered action going off because it oh, moved yeah. away. Oh, not next to you. Yep. Yep. Fuck you. Oh, are you going <laughs> to teleport? He <laughs> is going to teleport. Do you not need line of sight for that? Nope. Kind of a bit. <laughs> and I actually gain. Plus two damage on that, which I forgot to add. God damn. Nice, dude. Um, I've got this, Ryla! I believe in you, buddy! Oh, nice, you got and I'm going to shift two again to the next stair. And run my full speed uh, down the next area. Okay. That'll be my turn. Right. Oh, uh, why is is that? Never mind. I'm I'm retarded. Never I'm mind. It's all good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure, right, yeah. Man, it feels like you have a turn every turn. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps running, moving around. If it stayed still. Uh... All right, um, I'm going to do another commander's strike. Um, this time it's just going to be a melee basic attack, but uh, you will get a bonus to the damage. Um, see, oh, that uh, that's right, I can now delete my own effects, can't I? Because that one there will have worn off. But we'll give you a new one, and then you can do a melee <laughs> basic Uh, one sec, da, 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 da. commander strike. That work? Yep. Do a melee basic attack. See, Periwinkle, this makes up for all the times you fucked us over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just kidding, buddy. No, I love you. So does um, do you get to do two melee basic attacks or something? He, I get he to basically roll twice. has 5e advantage. Oh, right. But only against my Earth of Enmity target. And which only is if great. No There's only one target. Like you don't you don't get to do it if an ally is adjacent to it? Is that right? Something like that. Okay. 
something, something, something. Uh, the wraith is going to try and tear your head off, and then it's going to try and move through to where Rala is, slamming you. Uh, I can hit with this ship, but not the good one. God damn it! <laughs> can he move eight spaces? He moves eight spaces. God damn it! He has uh, so he speed moved away. Head. He did, oh. <laughs> and threw Rila uh, off the train. Are you serious? I'm I'm out of shit. I'm sorry. Man. Wait, no, you'd be in the next carriage, wouldn't you? You're not actually yeah. in the middle space. Yeah. Okay, so he no. he goes to you and just pushes you further into the next bit. So I'm just gonna put you up there right. to indicate that he is up there as well. At least with you. Uh, and Trabo, you'll move two back, but I'm not sure that's gonna make any difference because you're a teleporting maniac. <laughs> I also have a rocket belt. Yes. Uh, this thing is looking severely fucked up though. Uh, same old same. It's now, yeah, two squares away from you, rather. Okay. Uh, ahead of me or behind me? Behind you. It pushed All you right. further in. Oh, right, right, okay. Okay. Yeah, damn. So annoying. Uh, shift two. Yeah, well, we're all doing half damage to him. Kind of, kind of making him live a lot long. Yeah. Uh. So shift two, run six again. Uh, do I see anything yet? By the way, up here. In the next character, you see a series of shut doors, a couple of which you know to be the double doors leading into Luke's room. Uh. I'll slam a jam on my way up to that door. If I, well, as soon as I can, anyway. Okay. Oh, as you as you slam into the doors and push them open, you see the room is completely empty of people, except wait no no except empty of people, but in the middle sits a glowing blue lamp. You guys have seen the lamp, eh? Do, do, do you want me to send you an image again? I think yes. I've seen it. It looked like this. Ooh. That's a oh, fancy that's cool. <laughs> uh, hmm. I'd like to bat a game here for a moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Ryler's experience with mystical objects is that he just likes to shoot, and it seems to have worked out for him so far. So, uh, just want you guys to understand that it's not something that I want to do, it's not but I need <laughs> Kennedy Winkle would cheer you up. I mean, that's kind of his MO as well. Remember, uh, nothing, the, nothing takes the enemy by surprise more than a forward ch- it's true. So, uh, Trouble, I'm, I'm sorry as well to you as well. Uh, I'm going to action point here. <laughs> and I'm good. Uh, man with two guns is good. And fire both guns at this lad. Okay. Do I need to roll for that? No. So the lantern, as you shoot at it, that's what you're shooting at, right? Yes. Explodes and kills you all. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. Oh, you finished that guy. No, no. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back down in the train, Trabro, General Periwinkle, as you're seeing this wraith slam through the doors ahead of you, Trabro, you're pushed back before you can grab you know, even have a chance to, to get up to this thing, uh, suddenly you're all ripped through space, if it were. Uh, you are Again. torn from where you are, and you are... Or you find yourself laying where you were, originally in your carriage, in your in your room, um, when this whole event started. Uh, it seems you've fallen as if unconscious, 
and uh, you're all sort of groggily waking from some sort of fever dream. Uh, you seem to have escaped dream. from this nightmare realm. Uh, all the lanterns in this area uh, briefly glow purple again and then return to their typical yellowish hue. Uh, and the train, you hear now all of the sounds of the weather and the train and which is, I don't know, some noise you can make it up. Um, and you hear a, a whistle of the train indicating that it's about to arrive in this station as you all come to. The, the wraith that you were fighting in the train before does not appear to be. Neither does Boone. <laughs> do we have, Luke, like, you're dead. Do we have physical wounds? Like, is there any, like, sign that of what, like, that what we experienced was real? You, uh, Trabro, no, if, if you're, if you're, yeah, Zambria's back, your head is now full and you, all your, your head is filled with his, wait, 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 wait. oh my god, I was so panicked. Um, <laughs> and also, if your energy was, like, you know, your tiredness was measured on a scale of 0 to 76, you'd feel about a, about a 31 right now. Uh, Ryla, if yours was 0 to 68, you'd feel about a 29. What? And General what? Periwinkle, if what? yours was 0 to 62, you'd feel about a 42. That's about how good you guys feel right now. But there's no <laughs> physical wounds that you... Uh, it's, it's all just exhaustion, fatigue, tiredness. Uh, I'd like to vote that we go shoot Lucia in the face. I was going to suggest it if you did I don't know. I'm still wondering if if uh, Pierre Eagle was just going to blame the whole experience on the pipe. So give me five minutes, and then I'll be keen to go punch him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, understood. Are we all like right next to each other? Like, um, like do we have like sort of my our bunks are kind of next to each other, aren't they? I'll probably hear they like I guess these guys like swearing and being like you know realize that probably something is actually up. So yeah, what are you doing right now? As the train lurches, the brakes are plying, and people begin bustling out of their rooms and and or, uh, not orderlies. What do you call them? Um, yeah, orderlies. No, those are hospital people. Porters start conductors. carrying yes. conductors and porters start carrying luggage uh, to and from the train. It becomes a busy, bustling mess uh, as you guys bust out of your room, still shaking your head and coming to. So there's but, no sign that the average Joe people were affected in any way. No, no, no. A few people are sort of mentioning. Mm, did you see the lamps go purple for a moment back there? That was odd. And someone says, yeah, it's probably just a remnant of the Malice Lands. <laughs> Don't you know? That sort of thing's quite common in the the, the lands bordering the Malice. <laughs> but other than uh, the slight purplish tinge, nothing. Are we at the final destination? You are not. You're in Sidmanos. Oh, okay. Um... I imagine Periwinkle's gonna tag along with the other two. It sounds like they were pretty keen to go punch Luke's face. <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right. Does it take us five minutes to get to his room? Yeah, you can have a short rest. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <It's> fucking weak. <laughs> you, go, you guys are short rest. You can spend your healing surges. That wraith really fucked me up. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised none of you guys tried any healing. He, he was almost dead, so he probably didn't need to, but if you tried healing, oh, heals him. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, those healing moves we have. Well, you've got a warlord, <laughs> they can heal. I do have a few, but the thing was, Ryla was too far away, and Trabro wasn't actually too bad for most of the fight. Mm. So, what are you guys doing? Checking uh, my inventory for anything interesting. Your inventory? What are you looking for?
Anything interesting? <laughs> is, is there a thing in particular you're looking for? Any type of thing? Or literally, do you want me to read off your inventory and you tell me? I, I'm looking at it now, thinking, <laughs> no, I've got, I used those bags of witch oil. We can't use those again. <laughs> So I did have a holy symbol, which probably would have been handy in that. I think that's just your, um, casting. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, that does remind me, uh, is the ring still in there? Yo, yes. Got a lot of good in it, dude. Seems like our brains were transferred to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Shadow Realm. Literally, yeah, you were transformed, transferred to that realm. So he was actually obviously deliberately targeting us, it seems. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm gonna take this as an act of hostility. You have struck an officer of the law? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys see, um... A porter dragging a case that's one of the cases you recognize uh, as Luke G is, uh, dragging it off the train and out into the, uh, the, the sort of, what do you call it, the train enclave. And uh, you see him loading it up into a carriage. And uh, as you try to push through the crowd, I'm sure you're going to chase him. Uh, you see him. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't, didn't even wait, need to wait for you to be like, follow him! Uh, he, he sort of holds his hand up to the edge of the cart and you see uh, a long slender hand stick her hand out and drop a couple of coins uh, you, you recognise some of the tattoos and uh, the clothing is that worn by Octavia Luke Gia's uh, travelling companion uh, and then the cart sort of rumbles away uh, through the crowd and out towards the exit of the enclave you quickly catch up with the guy who was the the porter. Uh, if you wanted to ask him where they're headed, or if you just wanted to give give chase on foot. I was gonna say, can I mark the carriage as an oath of enmity, type? Foot? <laughs> it's just just a carriage. <laughs> Your the horse gonna be pulling like, it. It's it's a carriage, bro. <laughs> yeah, the horse pulling a carriage. It's a horse, bro. No. Uh. No, I'll, I'll, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna limit that one. Too many people in the way, you'd sort of focus and then be interrupted and that sort of deal. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of too many people in the way, I assume this carriage isn't going full speed because there's a lot of people, right? Yeah, shit, yeah, bustling, bustling. Uh. Oh. Oh boy. Guys, I'm gonna go catch up to this cart and, and jump on the. and try and go invisible. I was going to say, just hold on to my belt. Okay, I'm going to do that instead. Are we uh, going to just rocket ship into that fucking car? Are we doing another Voltron? Oh, shit. <laughs> yes! <laughs> absolutely! Does that mean they all take the damage? <laughs> oh my god, what are you doing now? I have a rocket belt. We're oh all going to grab on. <laughs> this is going to end badly. Oh yeah! I can hold Periwinkle under my arm like a football. And then I'll give you a piggyback ride. Doesn't it go in a random direction? Uh, oh no. On a one. On a, on a one on each D10. <laughs> Oh, yes, it'd be great for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the way you left. It was only one of them. Unfortunately, we only rock at seven squares. So 35 feet. I think 35 feet should be enough. Yeah, so there's a sudden... <sighs> Boof! And you guys are flung through the air. There's a... Um... Uh, um, a ripple of excitement that travels through the crowd uh, and people are looking up oh my lord 
uh, as you fly through the air and crumple a small family on landing. Uh, but you're Perfect. <laughs> By small family, do you mean like a family of gnomes or a family with few people? Yes. <laughs> oh no! A, a small family of gnomes crushed underneath. <laughs> 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 Acceptable losses. <laughs> Oh, this is war. Uh, you're you're somewhat closer to the cart. However, uh, you see with the attention that the explosion of the belt has drawn, you see Octavia popping her head out the side, and she turns back and you see her shouting something to the the driver who uh, begins to spur the horses and it takes off at quite a trot. Um, it's it's out of the gates before you can gather yourself and moving it too fast of a clip for you to catch up with. Unless you are to get your own cart, or perhaps find out where they're headed. I was hoping for a twenty. I know. Can man. we just, uh, can we just uh, jack a cart? That's. We're police. We're allowed to do that. Yeah. There's a I few think. that are um, back towards the train. You know, loading up with people and, and belongings. Um, there's a couple coming into the area. Uh, it's kind of a, a crapshoot which one would be faster whether you can maneuver around uh, to turn one around that's in amongst a whole bunch of people or if you backtrack and get the other one either can way we it's just, gonna have a bit can of a we just like there. cut the sorry can we just yeah. cut the chains on a cart and just grab the grab you the could horses? do the the classic way to clear a crowd and just shoot a shot in the air that would uh highly likely despite you being police officers and protesting the fact, uh, highly likely bring the Enclave Guard down on your heads very quickly. As if crushing a family already hasn't? <laughs> uh, well, also, to if be it honest, didn't, it certainly would now. <laughs> are we kind of out of our jurisdiction? A little bit. Yeah. Details, detail. Uh, how about we just fucking horse jack some shit and get a move on because... I think we should probably not lose them. That, that I, porter yeah. that you just shot like 35 shot. feet away from, <laughs> like you shot away from him on the belt, uh, sort of runs up and he says, what are you doing? Did you miss your car? You're going with the lady and her friends. Uh, yeah. Do you happen to know where they're going? Or they forgot something very important and we want to give it. Yeah, yeah. Um, fuck, what was the note she wrote? She I'm going to hand uh... them 100 gold. Oh, Cool. All right, mate. I was just, re- I was just, all right. And he takes it. And he says, uh, "Still, I've got to remember." I was thinking, you distracted me now of all this gold. Um, oh, hang on. She's written it. Yes, yeah, you've written me a note. Here we go. And he pulls out a, a little crumpled bit of paper, and uh, it says, uh, basically, please find us a cart man who will quickly take us to the harbour, to a boat that will take us to the Isle of Odium. Great, great. Uh, by the way, who are we? Wait, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm asking, who are we? You're asking oh, him? Yeah. He says, what do you mean? There's a couple of lovely gentlemen lost a hundred gold on the ground. I was trying to find you to return it, but oh, I couldn't. Perfect, perfect good answer. Very good answer. Yeah, anyway, lovely. I've got to keep looking for these gentlemen now. And he turns around and goes to help someone out. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> Smart fellow. We'll I keep him around. around. So, can we just jack a horse slash take a horse and just drop a hundred dollar bill on the? Fuck it, yeah. Why not? It's enough to pay for a horse, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So you get a horse. I imagine we're well. I imagine I'm small enough that I can probably ride with somebody, but I don't know. We won't. Would we? We wouldn't be able to cram three of us onto a horse. Well, a cart would be pulled by two horses, right? We've all seen Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, are we going with? I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go. I was just gonna say, are, are we going with cart? Or are we just going by horse? Because I think we're. Are we trying to catch up, or are we gonna meet him at the harbor, or try to uh, anyway? I, don't know. I kind of like the idea of I kind of like the idea of chasing after them and trying to trying to seems more dramatic. Uh, all right, then let's just fucking horse it up. We're gonna fast and furious this bitch. 
Okay. Uh, you you get on a couple of horses. Some people give out little, hey, wait. Um, and then you just toss back bags of coins and they're like, oh, thank you, and catch them and oh, go about their merry day. Um, I could buy ten horses with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't, wouldn't say that much. Maybe one. <laughs> but you took one, so that works out. Um, it evens up. So yeah, you guys start to give chase to this cart and uh, it's booking along and you, you start to catch up to it. Um, but before you do, we, we're just going to have a 15 minute break so I can, I can eat and drink and all that good stuff. Alright, buddy. Alright, um, I'm just going to just quickly just, just mute. Yeah.
It would feel that way for you. <laughs> Rude. But fair. Yeah, I'm installing Age of Empire. You know what you should install, Dan? What's that? Warframe. Nah, I played it. Didn't like it. But... I mean, you're wrong, but okay. <laughs> and, then, and then you didn't install that thing I was trying to get you to play, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, uh, Postscriptum? Oh, that was it. I tried, and I can Did you get your refund, though? Oh. Fucking lame. That's... that's life, man. Yay, living in countries without consumer protection. Oh, <laughs> It's okay, I couldn't get a refund for uh, Fallout 76. Oh, why'd you even buy it? Because <laughs> it was fun till they added more bugs. <laughs> I mean, could have had the same amount of good times just slamming your hand in a car door. Yes, you're not wrong. My brother's wife is like a diehard Fallout fan. Like she has like a, a Pip Boy tattooed on her arm. I'm not quite that diehard. Uh, not after this fucking BS game. Dude, she is full on just like in denial. Yeah, oh, it's such a bad. Like, like she's she's saying that it's a great game and all that. Yeah, she's like, oh, it's not that bad. People are making a bigger deal out of it than they need. I mean, it could be worse. I mean, yeah, it could delete your System 32, I guess. I mean, it only deleted itself for the first few <laughs> days. That, that was pretty special. <laughs> That's like the best bug. <laughs> oh, your computer was fucking rejecting it like a goddamn bacterial infection. Oh, yeah. That was pretty fucking special. Oh, yeah. Then didn't they leak a whole bunch of people's data or something? Yep, they doxed yeah. everyone trying to get a refund. <laughs> but only to other people getting a refund. They pulled a Tesla, basically. Oh, my God. Did you, did you see Tesla do that? Someone put yeah. in a support ticket, and then they got access to everyone's support ticket. And also all of the entire Tesla, for Tesla forum. So did they release credit card numbers like Fallout? Dude, oh they, had, they had all of the billing information for everyone. Oh, numbers, no. All of the pe people's names, addresses, contact details. They could, oh, even, no. they could even adjust the orders as if they were a customer service representative and add free shit to other people's <laughs> orders if they so choose. Oh, now that is special kind of special. that bad. Like, yeah, they just... They, they hired the test shit to do their IT. I think because they put in a ticket and the ticket wasn't answered well, so they asked for an elevated ticket. So the person gave them elevated... Admin rights. Alright, this is fucking that's elevated, pretty... eh? Yeah. And then they, they right. accidentally deleted the entire forum. Oh my god. The entire Tesla forum. God. <laughs> Why? Uh, it's all over. Like, if you go look at the, the Tesla Reddit, you can find the story, and the person's got all the image pictures from everything, like, taken out of the this... information. But is this just glorious. recent, or is this. Uh, like, a couple of months? In the last oh, couple of yeah. months? Have you seen uh, Musk's stupid fucking tunnel? Yeah, <laughs> holy <laughs> shit. Oh my god. He spent a billion dollars on a fucking dumb tunnel under a city that basically transports Teslas at a very slow speed. And it's supposed okay. to solve the world's public transportation. So he is he... Uh, he yep. invented a he shittier... If he spent a billion yeah. dollars on it? Oh yeah, dude, it's fully built. And it's fucking terrible. Yeah. It's basically a subway, except that you, the cars, the, the subway cars are Teslas that you have to own, and it goes at a top speed of like 20 miles an hour. So still faster than rush hour traffic. 
Um, yeah. Also, there is like no, looks like there is like no emergency exits or escape tunnels. Oh. If like, you know, a lithium ion battery that Teslas are full of might happen to catch fire on a. Oh, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Musk claims the tunnel will have capacity of moving 4,000 cars per hour at 155 miles per hour, which would require having cars enter and leave the tunnel via an elevator once every 0.9 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Ex existing underground freeway alternatives, aka subways, move 30,000 passengers an hour, which is more than if every five-seater Tesla was full and Musk somehow figured out the capacity issue. <laughs> Just, I wish if you look at this, just the quality of the tunnel, like the concrete it looks work. Looks like a shitty like, little fucking like it's just a yeah. building on strip in a shitty tunnel. <laughs> hey, not bad for a billion dollars. Like, though. And that's it. They spend a billion dollars and they can't even like get even lines on the fucking cron. Like did they just hire the lowest fucking sub tier fucking contractors to work on this shit. Yeah. Uh. Like holy shit, I don't understand. Why people give Elon money? Like literally, he's a fucking idiot who doesn't know how to do anything. He's not even an engineer. Hey, I would have bought a flamethrower. Yeah, yeah sorry, and it would what? explode in your mouth. It's well, I would have put it in my mouth. Do you know what it's he's done? Would. He's watched iRobot, and he's seen the tunnel that Will Smith has the fight against the robots in the automated car tunnel, and he's thought, "How can I do that except shit?" <laughs> that's what he's done. <laughs> Like, SpaceX <laughs> seems to have actually done quite well despite him, but I suspect that's because it's probably, like, actual fucking rocket engineers that are making all the fucking important decisions. Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> but it's obviously, like, being, like, with Tesla, the more and more he's taken a personal involvement in, the more and more he's tanked the fucking company. And this last yeah. year, he's just completely gone off his fucking meds. Oh, dude, this is how, like, super villain villains are created. He would be the world's shittiest supervillain, so I mean, God. He's, a, he's our only supervillain at this point in time. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. God, he's so stupid. I wonder what happened. Is that guy still suing him? You know, the guy that he just randomly called a pedo for no reason? Yeah, a fucking, fucking hero awesome. that saved, like, <laughs> dozens of fucking Thai boys out of a cave that they were going to drown in by diving in there. But because he said Elon Musk's submarine wouldn't work, Elon Musk called him a pedophile. Yeah, you mean his fucking little his tiny submarine coffin? Submarine coffin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, one that, that literally, literally couldn't traverse one of the curves. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't even fucking fit in the area. <laughs> yeah, that oh one, the very God. same. That's the one. <laughs> oh, oh dear. About it. I just. Oh my God. He's just the worst person is he though he makes yeah heroes. you have trump <laughs> hey uh, he smoked weed that one time so he's cool right no. like trump has set a really high bar for the worst but that's that's true considering he was it he's hit He's had to not go to his estate in Florida for Christmas because they're still arguing about spending seven billion dollars on a. Oh, oh my Mexico's God! Mexico's paying for that, right? <laughs> so, oh, you guys don't even know the fucking half. All right. <laughs> oh, oh don't God. worry. We we know. We know. This this motherfucker was offered $1.6 billion. It was bipartisan. Both left and right were cool with it, and they were like, all right, yeah, we're going to get $1.6 billion for border security, even though we don't fucking need it, whatever. It was a, a, enough to just jerk each other off. To... And Trump was like all all down and getting buttered up and shit. He's like, all right, yeah. Then like a fucking day before the uh, budget was supposed to be agreed on, he's like, nah, I want $5.6 five and th that's obviously not going to fucking happen. So now the government's shut down. Like 480,000 people are working for no money that they will not get back paid. Oh my god. And some stupid fucking Trump supporting idiots are trying to crowdfund. They've made. Crowdfund. <laughs> yeah, that's crowdfund not a joke, by the way. 
Let's yeah. get Mexico to pay for it. Here, chip in 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Perspective. Last time I checked, it was up like 13 million or something. Uh, oh, wow. They're trying. Well, they need a billion. They're just. By the way, this is one billion dollars. That's not even going to cover 0.1 percent of the wall. Uh, and they've raised maybe 0.1 percent of one billion. They're the fucking stupidest people on earth. It's gonna say we finally found a dumber Kickstarter than Star Citizen. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's it's hard to find. Oh, it's so good, it's so good. Did you see uh, um, what's his name's post, Jeff? Star Citizen defending stuff. Oh, uh, of course it, dude. Have you been to the Star Citizen Reddit where it's just a giant circle? Oh yeah. Do you just know somebody that's a that's a believer? Unfortunately. <laughs> He was he was a member of our pers- person group that I fired. He was an interesting fellow. <laughs> I hope he doesn't die too slowly. <laughs> wow. Quickly, sorry, quickly. <laughs> I just don't get how anybody. Well, I guess it's just sunk cost at this point. Yeah, it's gotta be. Like, come on, it's prick. It's. Fucking obvious now that if it didn't start off as a scam, it sure as fuck is one now. Hey, they've released a playable alpha. Uh, There's three playable games. That's more than one game. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's oh, such wow. good value for money. <laughs> the thing that just amazes me about that thing is though that it just keeps trickling on it's and like, on and on. They're still getting like ten million a month. It's fucking ridiculous. Well, was it? The other week, they had a discount week going on, and they raised $17 million. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Like, where is this money coming from, is what I just... Like... Yeah, it can't be... Job. Everyone owns a copy. <laughs> In the world. <laughs> Every single person on Earth, yeah. Everyone's brought at least the $30 pack. Uh, it's just people who have more money than sense. No, those are the people that are spending 17 grand on the game. There's been bigger than that. There's people that are like six figures deep, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, the current big pack is 17 grand. Oh, okay. Is that the no, one? Not place? individual purchases. Right. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, there's this post on the Star Citizens forum where this guy is like, um, uh, Talking about how his family all agreed that they were going to skip Christmas and donate more fucking money to his family. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. I'm serious, dude. 100%. Like, does he have, like, kids? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He said the kids That's agreed, too. And I <laughs> fucking highly doubt that. Well, he's, he's told them, look, we'll play the spaceship game when it comes out in unspecified amount and of time thinking, because they like, keep yep, pushing release we'll give out Christmas presents and have this spaceship game for Christmas yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, like, fuck. Christmas 2080 roughly oh, Jesus God. God, like just about anything else you could spend your money on like fuck I mean even, even if you like, like even a hero like if it was a heroin addiction you'd at least get something out of it it's true Sorry, kids, we're skipping Christmas. I'm going to buy meth. Ah, <laughs> uh, you'd be a fun dad for a while. And then a not fun dad for <laughs> Until much longer. Until you start beating me. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, uh, I'm going to see if I can find that shit. Just, that was hilarious There's to going me. to be deaths when that collapses. Eh? Oh, for oh, sure, God, dude. Yes. Apparently, they still haven't worked out how to get rid of the, the water in the engine like what? the crisis engine still renders an ocean because the whole like the engine was you know originally based to play a game that was set on an island so the game apparently still renders a water layer and apparently people have like bugged out and clipped and they're, they're, they're like your avatar starts drowning when shit goes. <laughs> fucking oh my god that's fucking beautiful did you see um it was quite early on in their development cycles but because they had the crisis engine limitations and like 
space, right? Like they only had so much space to work with. So they shrunk everything down. Yeah. And that's that's why when you have a, a ship that your guy is inside, you clip through it because your model doesn't shrink down very well to these ships that are 50th of a normal size unit that the crisis engine should be rendering. And then they'll have like a single packet loss type thing and the ship would be 10,000 in-game miles away from where it was because it's got one pixel difference sort of thing. And then shit, just shit yeah. like that. They were trying to, basically, they were trying to use like 32 bits to render an entire universe, which yeah. is just dumb. I mean, that actual thing is what Warframe does for some of the missions, but that's literally free to play. Yeah. You're not sinking seventeen million dollars into it. No. no. Oh, uh, Spy, I linked you that video, right? It was like fifteen minutes long. There's just a guy traversing from one planet to <laughs> yeah, just doing one little faster than life jump, uh, faster than light jump in system. It's fifteen minutes. Yes, yeah. yes, I've literally watched streamers playing it. I'm like, this is. It's unskippable too. It's fucking. This incredible. is a time. It's a long time. It's fifteen minutes of time. Oh, oh! But don't you understand? Each new planet is like playing a new game. They're all devoid of anything. <laughs> I don't want a new game. I want the game I. <laughs> I want the space game. I don't give a shit about planets. It's nice to fly around above. These are the type of people that play this game by the Oh, here we go. Oh, is this gonna be the picture of the the real the guy with the creepy boxes and the rabbit? Oh no, this not is not quite. 